All right, we are going to talk about relays, how they work, and how you wire them up. So just a quick review. Whenever there's a, uh, a current flowing through a conductor, there's a magnetic field that forms around that conductor. So if we take a piece of wire and we coil it around itself or around some kind of uh, iron core, for example, uh, we create an electromagnet because the magnetic field is now multiplied because you wrapped it around itself. So I have a simple switch here tied to a battery, which is going to allow me to energize this electromagnet and pick up these metal pieces. When I de-energize the circuit by opening the switch, then the metal pieces should fall back down. So let's take this principle and apply it to this metal plate, which is tied to a hinge. And we have a spring here that's trying to pull this back down. See, because this is on a hinge, it can pivot up and down. But it can only pivot this far and hit this stud and be pulled back down and hit this stud. So by energizing the electromagnet, this would pull up so far. And then when we de-energize it, Gravity and the spring would pull it back to its normal position. So this is its normal state. Normal meaning no action taken upon it. No power applied. Well, this is just a switch. Just like we see in this drawing, this ladder diagram. Here we have a real switch tied to this battery. This whole section here can act as a switch. So if I tie this to a circuit and notice that we have the positive of this power supply tied to this stud. Current would want to flow through here, this conductor, but there's nowhere for it to go. When I energize the electromagnet, which would be up close to this, it pulls this plate up, hits this stud, and completes the circuit to turn on the light. Notice that the return of the negative was already tied to this load, so we're just switching the positive side. Now I'm going to tie two loads to this switch configuration. Again, positive is tied to what they call the common. And this is in its normal state. So this side is the normally closed side. That's why this light is currently on. This is our normally open side between these two points. That's why this light is off. When we energize the electromagnet, we can cause this to flip-flop. So here's our coil, electromagnet energized, pulled in, de-energized, pulled off, or dropped out. Now let's take a very small voltage, 24 volts DC. We're going to control this electromagnet through this switch. And this part is an entirely different circuit. Notice it's a much higher voltage. We're going to energize that electromagnet pulling in this plate, which completes the circuit for a much higher current. That is the fundamental principle for all relays. I like to use this quick animation to kind of hit this home. This is a common school bell. This gong, uh, this clapper can hit this and make this bell ring. Okay. Right now, the switch is in the off position, so no current is flowing. This is our power source. Here is our normally closed point. So the positive is going through this normally closed, around this electromagnet, through the switch, to the return side of the power supply. So when we turn this switch on, current flows through this normally closed point, creating an electromagnet. Well, the moment that magnet is strong enough to pull this in, this clapper, here's our hinge point. It pulls this in and rings the bell. Notice now that our circuit is de-energized because we open this at the same time. Well, because we have no electromagnet, because we don't have any current flow, this guy wants to spring back to its normal state. When it does, it completes the circuit and wants to start the cycle over again. And that is the, the typical school bell function. So here's a, a regular relay. We're looking at the top of the relay. 
it's telling us that the contact points can handle 10 amps at 250 volts AC. So the contacts can higher, uh, handle a much higher current. The coil can be energized by 24 volts DC, much smaller voltage and current. Here's a side view of that same relay. Well, let's talk about the coil. This is our coil, the blue part. I want you to notice that this coil is being supplied by a much smaller wire, much smaller current. So it doesn't take much to energize this magnet. Here is our plate that wants to pull in whenever this is energized. And here is our hinge point. We've got a bunch of things tied to this hinge point. These are the contacts. And this is all going to get plugged into a base. You'll see here we're plugged into a base. So this all, all these items, this wire, this one, these contact points all go to a base, uh, male end of a base plug. And we're going to look at that, how that plugs into this base. So here's our power to the coil, which I pointed out. And this is called the common. Notice the size of this wire. That's because this is tied to our contacts, which is rated at a much higher current and voltage. So I've highlighted this to show this lead where it travels to. Okay, now this is the normally closed side of this contact configuration. So if we were to put a meter at these two points, a, a continuity meter, it would tone out for us. Because this relay is off, it's in its normal state, this is the normally closed side of that relay. So let's tie a circuit to this. So here's our hot leg tied to one. It travels through one through the common. The common is touching four, the normally closed. So point four then feeds the hot leg to this load. The return side of the load was already wired. So the load would turn on immediately, even though this relay is turned off. Here's a switch configuration of that. This is a three-way switch uh, logic, if you want to look at it that way. And let's wire in the load. So we're looking at the hot leg of our power supply going to one, which is right here. Then it touches four. That would be going through here and right here, touching four. From four, feeding the supply or hot side to the load, which is right here. And then the return side was already connected, and that's this point right here. Here's a ladder diagram that showed the same thing. Now, whenever you look at an electrical drawing, and it's in ladder format, and you see a, a, a closed symbol here, it means that when this coil is de-energized, this contact is showing you its normal state. So blueprints are normally showing you the normal state. This is the normally open side. Notice there's a little bit of a gap here between the common and the normally open side. So let's do some highlighting. So we've got 120 volts AC connected to 1. And that would be the part that I'm highlighting here. That's point one. Notice this travels all the way to right here. Now the point where one is touching four, I'm showing that in highlighting. That's where those contacts touch. Now let's look at our return to the power supply, or our negative if you want to think of it that way. We're going to put that right here. And now we have our two loads. So we're going to wire in our two loads, just as our wiring diagram is showing here. We want to tie in the easy stuff first. Well, the return side of this circuit is not being switched through anything. So each load goes directly to our return bus, or our neutral. So we're going to wire that in first. Now let's look at our normally closed side. Four is tied to one load, and that would be here. Three is a normally open side, 
that would be here. Now this is completed and when we apply power on to this 120 volts, immediately this load would turn on and this one remains off because the relay is in its normal state. Now let's energize the coil. Notice the flip-flop action. And I'll do this a couple of times so you can watch what's going on inside the relay as well as the circuit diagram showing what's going on. Okay, now let's look at this in a ladder diagram format. So we have our supply side tied to the neutral. Now I did this first to hit home that we have in our ladder diagram we're showing the common in two separate places. One in the normally closed side of this relay, one for the normally open. Notice the numbers four and three. Well sometimes you don't get those numbers. You just know that this contact is associated with a certain coil. So I'm, I'm demonstrating this to show that the one connection, the supply side to one, is actually two points on this wiring diagram. Now let's look at the return side of this 120 volts. And that's going to be here. And now we're going to connect our returns for each load because they're not being switched we're just going to tie those in first here's our return side here's four coming off of the normally closed and that would be here four here's three the normally open side and here's three so now we're looking at the exact same circuit, but you're looking at it in a wiring diagram or ladder diagram format. If I energize our relay, we get the same flip-flop. And I'm showing in the circuit, the, the ladder circuit, how that would look if we were able to look at the change of state in ladder format. Okay, now let's look at this again one more time. And I call it the wiring configuration to show the switching that's going on. And it's no different than this. It's just shown in a different circuit format. Okay, the, the pin layout. This is the base that you plug the relay into. And there are pins that stick out at the bottom of the relay. You can only put this in one way because of this notch. And this allows you to make connection between the relay and these screw terminals. We have 24 volts positive tied to a switch. And that is tied to one side of our coil. The other side of this, which I have circled, is the negative of this power supply. And I'm showing here that that point is tied to the other side of the coil. So in other words, we're all set to energize this coil. All we have to do is close the switch. This point and this point are the same thing. Now we're going to take our other supply voltage, which is 120 volts AC. We're going to tie our feed, or the hot side, to two separate screw terminals. Notice that if we plug the relay in, it would tie into the relay at those two points. Also notice that we have a, uh, a return marked here on this supply in a different color than these two. Okay, we have four loads. One side of each load is tied to that same point, the 120 volts return. We've got a normally closed side of this relay. So when we plug this relay into the base without energizing it, we would have a complete path like we did in the other examples to this point. This return is the same as this return. So two loads would be on while two loads would be off. Now let's close this switch, energizing 
the coil, causing the electromagnet to pull in. And we have two sets of normally open and normally closed contacts. Notice how they switch. When the coil is energized, they would energize two separate loads, but the other two loads turn off. And that is just a number of ways to look at how a relay works and how we would wire that up.